You're listening to Woo Sox Insider, presented by your Worcester Red Sox. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Woo Sox Insider podcast alongside Dave Leonardi, Dylan McCaffrey. I'm TQ with a very special guest today, Courtney Caparelli. All you Woo Sox fans, you've seen her work. You've worn her work. You just don't know it yet. So, Courtney, thanks for joining us. It's great to have you on. And thanks for having me. This is fun. Of course. It's fun. fun. We haven't even started. (laughs) Courtney refused to come on the Nesson broadcast the other week. We were unveiling some some exciting new merch. But uh, to come on the Woodstock Insider podcast, which I guess I have to to take that for what it's worth. You guys are a bigger deal. I couldn't turn this one down. That's that's the truth of it. Just just big leaguing the broadcast. That's all it was. But... (laughs) So Courtney, we wanted you on the broadcast and we want you on the podcast now to tell us about a couple of new team names that just dropped with some merchandise and some logos. Tell us about the Worcester Ruby legs and the wicked worms of Worcester and what the heck they are, why we're doing it and what went into making those logos. Okay. When we were first moving to Worcester, um, we polled fans to see what name we should be, whether it was the Woo Sox or something different. And Worcester Ruby Legs and Wicked Worms were two suggestions we were given that I think kind of stuck in all of our minds and were fun. And we wanted to have a what if sort of night where we put them in uniforms and pretend it's real and make new logos. So that was how it started. Um, and let's start, let's start with Wicked Worms. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but when you look at Smiley Ball, I often feel like he's too happy. Like he's just too happy. So when we, it's like, turn it down. So when we first started with the worms, I really was like, I don't want another happy logo. Like we're still a sports team. Like these guys are athletes. Let's try to make it a little more uh, serious or aggressive. But even, I didn't think people would go along with it. So the first version he was just sort of like a frowny worm. Like he was just like, hmm. but it wasn't like angry. Cause I didn't think people would allow it. And amazingly enough in the meetings, everyone was like, no, like he needs to be more wicked. So I changed his face to more of a scowly kind of like, I'm the wicked worm. Um, and I think it's fun. I hope people, I hope people like it. I think it's fun too. And it's a, it's funny you say that smiley is too happy. Yeah. and obviously kids love him he's fun to be Loving around him. he's, he's so a blast cute. yes so yes. cute but this isn't the first time that you've either heard from someone else or had the idea that hey maybe smiley isn't the best in all places when it comes to our athletes when we were building the ballpark they needed to finish the home clubhouse first do you want to tell us about the redesign you had to make once players moved in, in the clubhouse. Yeah. So I'm sad. Like the public can't see this, but there is, I wish I could remember the name of the file, but he is, um, he's a serious I, smiley. He got some muscles. We gave him muscles. I, <laughs> so I little, named a little them, more jacked, who, a little more angry. Yeah. I call even him, affection and name for him. Yeah. I call him snarly ball. That's it. Yes. And he is, that's the face. And I guess you'll only know if you become a professional baseball player, but if, there. if you watch the Chris sale press conference that took place in the, in the weight room in the clubhouse, you might Can see you like see Starly it? balls, like foot in the corner of the screen, potentially a little Easter egg for you. The uh, muscles were my favorite part. He got bicep. So he's, he's ready. <laughs> Smiley worked out and got drafted. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but the, the wicked worm, it's just like, it's, you had to go, you had to make up for it. It's just the meanest looking worm. It strikes fear into everyone who sees it. Gosh. Worms are creepy. And then Worms I even are... wanted, it, when you see the word mark, it, I did like a split color. So the bottom is brown and the top is green because I wanted it to be like, this worm is emerging from the earth and he's wicked. <laughs> and like, I think about it way more than people probably think someone would when designing it. But when you see the two colors, that's that's why. <laughs> that's what goes into your greatness, Courtney. Oh, thanks. That's, that's how it happens. <laughs> so that's the secret formula. Tell it everybody listening how it is you ended up just making art for a baseball team for a living because you've been doing it for a while now and it's awesome this is actually kind of a fun story of how it started so 
I got my degree in studio art with the concentration in graphic design. And after college, I like didn't know where I wanted to go, thought about um, advertising. So I took a summer class at BU in advertising design just to sort of feel it out. Do I want to get my master's? And you're in Boston in the summer, like where do you want to be? So I had contacts at the Red Sox because my dad and his siblings sang an anthem in 2004. So I reached out and was just like, is there any work there I could do? I'm just taking a summer course. And there was like a free internship. So I started as a unpaid internship in fan services, segue that to part-time. And one day I was at work and I'm filling little like Ziploc baggies with Fenway dirt. And people are around the graphic designer's computer freaking out. And I feel like you guys are all young. So let me preface this by saying that this time, Photoshop was not a thing that people knew. Like you were either in the business or you were in school learning it and like pirated it for your own computer. So they're at her computer, she's on vacation, freaking out because they needed to make an ad. Matt Damon had just gotten nominated for some award and she's gone and they wanna make an ad for him for a paper. And they're like, what do we do? So I'm at my desk and they turn around and they're like, does anybody know Photoshop? And they're panicking. And I was like, I know Photoshop. So I like stood up. <laughs> went over to the desk and made this ad for Matt Damon that was just like congratulations from your friends at the Boston Red Sox with like the hanging socks logo but that was sort of a light bulb moment for me where I was just like oh my gosh I can merge these passions like baseball and design and make it a career maybe hopefully so that was the first thing I ever made and then once that happened, my manager at Fan Services was like, oh, you know how to make this stuff. And we did a lot of work with the family. So I started doing like photo albums for the wives at the end of each season. And in 07, we made them a special water bottle to commemorate the win. So little things like that is sort of where I got my start. Um, and then from there, a group of employees, coworkers went to the Dodgers and I'm from Los Angeles. And they called me one day and were like, listen, the graphic designer here has just taken a job with the New York Yankees. Do you want to come back to LA? And I was like, yes, I do. So then that was my first like full-time graphic design position. I was manager of production, graphic productions at the Dodgers. So that was sort of the path to the start. So I guess I should thank Megan, the designer at the Red Sox for having a healthy work-life balance and Matt Damon for existing. I Mookie think we Betts all and think. Courtney Caporale. It's just Red Sox to Dodgers. It's the way life goes. Get back, yeah. Get back again. I think we should all thank Matt Damon for existing. Yes. Wanna, and yeah, being Dave. such a darling of Boston that they wanted right. to congratulate him. What, what year was this? I'm thinking this is like Best Supporting Actor The Departed nominee. Is I don't that know. What it was either 06 or, about? O, 06 or 07. I don't remember. 06 what or 07. Ooh, yeah. maybe. The Departed is a great movie. It, a yeah. great movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> so, Courtney, you wrong. mentioned you mentioned that your dad and his siblings yeah. sang an anthem at Fenway Park. Yeah. How and why were and they, they allowed they sang, to do that? For those who are fans, in 2004, they sang at the playoff game, the Yankee playoff game, where it was just like, no bueno. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, game three. Yeah, so a little um, to nine a little downer on the memory. We were all like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, but but yeah, it was fun. So, who is your dad and his siblings? So they were they were in a band in the '60s. I feel so old in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were called the Cow Sales. They were a family band, but it weirdly Charles Steinberg, who I'm sure people know, he was visiting LA and walked into this pub and my dad happened to be playing and was like oh my gosh this guy's really good for a pub singer and someone was like no he's like a real singer his name's Bob Cowsill and Charles like lost his mind because at the time it was like Johnny Damon everyone had the hair on the Red Sox so they were playing his song yeah and he couldn't believe he like stumbled upon him in a bar basically and was like you guys need to come to Fenway to sing the anthem um because he's like a fan outside right. of that's an easy anything pretty easy sell I think yeah yeah and like my dad's from Rhode Island so the Red Sox are you know 
gone. So they were very excited to do it. Yeah, I could see how that would be an easy yes. Hey, I have a an big favor yes. to ask you. I want yes. you to sing the national anthem at Fenway <laughs> Park with your siblings for a Red Sox Yankees playoff game. Yeah. It was hard. They, you know, they wanted to say no, but eventually gave in and we're like, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> Why so not? <laughs> Courtney, you make essentially almost everything that goes on woosocks.com. A lot of the logos for all of our between innings promotions that happen in the ballpark, a lot of stuff that we end up promoting on Nesson as well. What do you think is if you had to pick one or two, your favorite logos that you've worked on with the Worcester Red Sox. I'd love to hear the ones that like the world has seen. And then also like one or two that the world never got to see potentially. Oh, oh, ooh. I don't know if there are any they haven't gotten to see, except for ones that like we haven't released yet, but those are secret. So you don't, you don't get to know about those. All right, fair enough. Um, let me think. Okay. I really liked... Tyler's teammates logo mm. and that's another one that I hid a little thing for people who don't know about it but he was a pitcher and I found a typeface called pitcher that I was able to buy and that's the font that his name is in within the logo so I really liked being able to tie in something about him into it without making it super obvious to everyone else because it's supposed to sort of be for all kids but that was one of my favorites that that ended up working out that way um and i think their inaugural season logo might be my other second favorite because that yeah. one that was a big one that was a fun one it went everywhere i remember on opening day there were there were two versions of it and on opening day i saw a couple and they each had on one of the logos and i went up to them and i was like this is gonna sound really weird but like can i take a picture of you guys together in that shirt because you're both wearing the logos and they were like yeah sure go ahead i was like thanks <laughs> I remember in the front office, there being like a big debate on which inaugural season logo we should use, like yes. which should be our primary inaugural season logo. And some people liked the one that's on Dave's hat, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then others liked the ones that had the heart shaped lights on it, too. And yeah, I remember, I, like I Courtney, I think you and I were team lights for sure. Yeah. But I think yep. we were both also thinking we need to use both for different purposes. Like yes. the lights looks great on the video boards. The one Dave's wearing looks great on merchandise and like on a, yep. a lapel, on a pin, whatever it might be. Like there's room for both. And then I think that ended up, well, not really ended up because we were in trouble before. There are so many logos. We have so many logos yeah. for everything. Yeah. I, logo say, I, want, for I want to go on record as saying I do prefer when there's one logo. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. I'm often in meetings and they'll be like, well, what about both of them? And I'm like, can't we pick one? Like, I'd love it if we just picked one. That I'm sitting in front of four different smiley balls right now. Yes, and yes, yes, you are. <laughs> that gets into what my favorite uh, Courtney <laughs> designs are. And as if you ever get to walk around the Woosox front office, every single department, every single person got a custom smiley. My smiley He's not holding the bat. He's holding the camera. TQs has got a camera and a microphone. Uh, you go around the room, there's sales, has phones, there's different people, different things. Yeah. The grounds crew has a bunch of swag with like Smiley, Perry, and Rakes. Those are my favorite. All yeah. the different Smiley's, Snarly Ball. Those were actually so much fun. I was like, I want my job just to be Smiley, like making him doing different things now and holding different <laughs> things. And that's just my only job. And I'm just surrounded by Smiley's all the time in like various positions. Yeah, yes. how many smiley ball variations have you made? Um, well, if we include the ones that went on our name tags, it's like over 30. <laughs> and then I just did the one for bike day. That was a fun logo too, where he's on the motorcycle. That, was that one's fun. sick. Yeah, That's I love sick. that one. <laughs> and then we add Woofster and Roberto the Rocket into the mix too. So yeah. you've been working on variations of them, including Pirate Woofster, who yeah. we saw last sunday and then you also brought he's, your he's kids going out on flags to the he's too. going on flags pirate wolfster so you can really buy pirate flags in the team store yeah <laughs> they should be in next week word <laughs> i said That's... i was like i think people will buy these <laughs> we Sounds should sail into the boston harbor problem. with like a mayflower type ship and just wolfster pirate flags flying we'll dump all the tea 
Yeah. It'd be great. It's perfect. <laughs> so Pirates, Prince, and Princesses Day was yeah. last Sunday. And Courtney, you were able to bring your kids out. And I think your kids are the biggest Woo Sox super fans I've ever met. They were yes. dressed to the nines on a hundred degree day. Oh, God, they How, were, yeah. God So Dave them. Decaf and I don't really know because we're always busy working during the games. Yeah. What was it like to come on such a theme day with your family and experience the ballpark as a fan? Honestly, and this is going to sound like a lie because I work here, but it's not. It was like going to Disney but less lines and way less money. It, like <laughs> that was the level of joy that they had being at this ballpark on a theme day. Like they could not believe it. Like it really was like being at Disney. And I, I mean, think you're, a lot you're of- meeting celebrities, Cinderella, Jack Sparrow. You're right. yes. Disney for yes. that. They're right here. Yes. No, my daughter's six and she made, I had to walk the concourse with her. Like th- it took three innings and we had the list and we had to find every single princess. And she take a, took a photo with each one and had me print it out. It's hanging on her wall. And she like is still talking about it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to bring up. Cause I saw that on your Instagram story yeah. and I've melted at home. Yeah. And it, I think it's easy when you're coming in and working every day to get caught up in the work itself, but to remember yeah. that you have a little girl coming in here in her favorite princess dress, mm-hmm. taking photos with all of her favorite characters and then hanging it up on her wall when she goes home because she had a fantastic day. I think yeah. that's, that's a great story and not to be lost in the shuffle of all of the things the Woo Sox are always doing. Yeah. The memories are real. And I always tell people like, no offense to the sales and the tickets. Like we need the business side of this business, but like all of us, we work in the memory side of this business and kids are leaving here with memories and saving the bobblehead boxes and, you know, taking the photos. So we're in a magical side of it, but it's easy to forget when you're coming in and you're tired and it's a long homestand. And yeah. I got to ask a question. Yeah. about about this night we just had which is pirates prince and princesses was it ever just prince and princesses it was when the pirates were were a new edition or am i mistaken or is it always pirates prince and pirates princesses? Oh, no. pirates were a new edition pirates and princesses year. is yeah because i pirates remember are, pirates are hot i don't I, mean, I mean like hot i mean like shout trendy. out shout out johnny depp <laughs> yeah no, I mean, like, <laughs> pirates are hot uh but because we 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 we've messed so many themes together that I lost track of this one because last year it was prince and princesses and it's not princes yeah. and princesses because it's a play on words it's it's princesses like Cinderella and then it's prince like Purple Rain uh, and that was like the theme of the fireworks when it was right. a firework night and now it's still not princes it's pirates prince and princesses or prince princesses and pirates or whatever you want to do triple P and. It's just hilarious to me that like we're, we're, we're playing, we're playing Prince songs as Jack Sparrow's running to the mouth and Cinderella's yeah, catching his first that's, pitch. That's, it's a my lot. Favorite, it's, a lot. It's, it's my favorite bit every year. And I've convinced myself that every year fans forget about it and say they went to Prince and Princesses night in 2021. They come out this year and then they're hearing Raspberry Beret and they're like, why are they playing Raspberry Beret right now? Why am I listening to Little Red Corvette as the Diamond Auto (laughs) truck circles around in between innings? I thought this was Prince and Princesses Day and it is always Prince and Princesses Day. And we haven't had our fix of Purple Rain this year. We used to play that every rain delay, all 50 of them, it seemed, in 2021 and knock on wood, but so far. Yeah. We definitely have couple. had more more tarp pulls than we've had actual rain come. Yeah, a lot of tarp pulls. They've been getting the tarp on like minutes before the rain starts coming down too. Yeah. The ground screw is unreal. We had, we, on the Cape Cod game, I wasn't able to be out there. I was in the control room, but I was look at, looking at a bright sky, <laughs> sun across the field with like shadows cast from the sun and just pouring rain. While it was happening, Worcester continues to just blow my mind with the weather patterns. We're uh, we're like on the island from Lost. We're just it's, it's unpredictable. <laughs> well, spoiler spoiler alert! Heard. Yeah, spoiler alert! You're saying from we're in purgatory, Lost? right? Yeah, from Lost. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe All some right. listeners aren't fully caught up. Yeah, what's Lost? Here's a spoiler for Lost: Thanks. the last three seasons aren't good. There's your spoiler. <laughs> 
Stop watching after Charlie dies. Spoiler. <laughs> Whoa, that's a big spoiler. You got to you got to mute that one out, Dave. Yeah. People people who are living 15 years in the past are going to be upset with you, Decaf. Yeah. Well. Wow. So, Courtney, when you're not buried in Photoshop and Illustrator, what what do you do? Are you just hanging out with the kids, going down to the beach, living yeah. in Rhode Island? Yeah, it's summer, so we go to the lake a lot. Um, they're not quite ocean age yet. And then when I need a little creative freedom, I'll do some watercolor paintings of baseball players because I can't get enough baseball in my life. So, <laughs> Courtney, I, I, I aspire to be you in my career where I can have like a foot in baseball and in sports and be doing yeah. the thing that I love and be surrounded by it. And then you also like have so many other creative endeavors you get to pursue just in your own life and you get to go be with your kids and family. And you really just, you've, you've been around from coast to coast working baseball I and have, you yeah. finally <laughs> you found your niche. It's an it's inspiring place to end up for all of us 20 somethings trying yeah. to figure it out ourselves. Well, and I will say in the minors too, um, there's a lot more freedom, like creative freedom, like the uh, Paws and Socks book, for example they were like looking for an illustrator. And I was like, oh, I'm like trying to teach myself watercolors. Like, can I just illustrate it? And they're like, yeah, go ahead, try it. So I got to like illustrate a book, uh, which I don't know if I would have had that freedom in the major leagues. They're much right. more willing to let you just sort of uh, do what you want. Let's see what happens and make something cool. You might've had the, the freedom, but just it could not have been tied to the team at all. It's like, yeah, yes. you can illustrate yes. a book if you want, but it's going to be right. your book yeah. or you're going to, do it freelance and it better not get in the way of your job here. Yes. <laughs> so in a similar vein, Courtney, what advice would you give to a young creative looking to break into the sports world or that is just starting to work in the sports world and, and feeling like, wow, I'm really just going at it all day long and starting to feel a little burnout. We all feel it no matter where yeah. you work, starting to feel the burnout. Maybe the creative process isn't clicking as it normally would. What kind of advice would you give to a, a young creative that's just grinding through it? I think the most important thing to remember, especially in creative careers, are you need to keep a part of it for yourself because it is work and it will become work. And there are logos that I don't like that I made, but it was what I was asked to make and they're happy. And, you know, I, I always say, sometimes you're the artist and sometimes you're just the pencil. And if you feel like you've become the pencil for too much and you're making what you have to make because you've been told to make it, find a way you can become the artist again. Even if it's one night on a weekend, you make a music video that you just send a friend like, oh my gosh, I saw this play, look how funny this is. And you have to keep that piece of it for yourself or you'll get, you'll get lost in the shuffle. Absolutely. Great words. I, I, I think a lot of people, especially like, I mean, I went to Emerson, uh, Emerson College and art school and everyone that goes there like wants to pursue a career in art. And then yeah. like, I'm like a year out of graduating and a lot of my friends are like, you know, art is what I love to do, but I also love like paying rent and credit card bills. And so it's like a, it's like a, a choice to the crossroads of like, I can really pursue this thing that I love, or I can like you know, like take the skills I've made and find a job that is more consistent. And I think it just depends absolutely on the person. Like, I don't think it takes a special kind of person to work, you know, countless hours for a baseball team. But I also think that like, if you have that in you, then it can be the most fulfilling thing that you get to do in your life. Yeah. And I think there's also, there's a tendency if you have a creative path to be like, oh, this is just a hobby. So you'll be like, I have to pick a different job. This isn't a real job. This is just something I like to do. It's just creative. So there's this pressure from outside of you to find something more stable, but there are so many careers in the arts that aren't, you know, sitting in a shack in the woods, painting with acrylics, trying to sell something at an art fair on the corner. Not that there's, you know, people do that. They love it, but you can segue it into business if you, if you try. You know, about shacks for sale. That's, I, that I sounded nice. It. I that did, picture, right? I know. Yeah. As I said, I'm like, maybe this isn't so bad. <laughs> that picture you little, just painted uh, with words sounded great. A painting <laughs> retreat? So is that where you're going to take all the young aspiring artists? A painting retreat. Yes. Actually, that sounds lovely. I would do that. 
are you gonna get to work with these young aspiring artists once we've uh, we've gone through the selections and, and figured out um, what it's gonna look like? I, well, they've gone to art camp, so that was their big prize, but I'm trying to convince someone to have like a, a gallery opening, like at the ballpark where it could have their oh. little like artist statement and their art up and people can come and there's like fruit platters and apple juice and, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to speak a little bit more on this program that the Woo Sox Foundation is putting on because I think it's a great thing that we're doing for local kids in the area. And also I don't know too much about it myself. So I would just love to hear more about what exactly is going on. Okay. So this is like one of the most greatest things I've been a part of. So there's four pillars for the foundation and we asked kids, I think it was age eight to 12. Cause that was the age of the art camp to draw a picture representing one of the pillars and for each of the pillars we would pick one winner and they're going to have a t-shirt made that will be sold in the team store proceeds going to the foundation and they were going to be sent to art camp so we had the submissions and we weren't sure if people were going to get into it or like it but we got so many and we had to it was so hard to choose I was like send them all but we couldn't so we ended up picking the four kids and they went I think it was last week they went to the camp and have they became like best friends and had the most amazing time and we'll have the t-shirts later this season i hope that you know in 20 years or whatever when they're when they're designing the new logo for the 15th team in vegas that they're like <laughs> i went to an art camp when i was I a kid and that's just what did it for me so wait the well, well, wait, foundation hold killer. on you want to you hear the education this? recreation conquering yep. cancer social justice did i nail that Good so job, yeah. I would say I was afraid as, to say them because I could totally remember. instead of instead of uh, recreation diamond sports specifically diamond oh, yeah. sports. so yeah, baseball diamond sports. softball diamond sports but wait the campers this is the sweetest thing one of the girls who won I think it was conquering cancer contacted us and was like thank you so much I would love for this to be a t-shirt I'm so happy I won but my little sister lives for making art can I send her to the camp instead? And so I know so the sister got to go to the camp and then we're going to use the original winning art for the t-shirt. But isn't that, don't you love that? Like, oh, That's so wholesome. Bigger it than is, baseball. it's so wholesome. That's I just need to go to art camp. I went to art school. None of it's took. I can't draw. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Give me a paintbrush and I'm just going to make a mess. I tried to they, draw the Boston Common on a paint night once and yeah. I drew the basis of it and I turned it into a turtle because it wasn't the Boston common at all but that's very creative there's there's no wrong in art Dylan it's okay, it's yeah. okay. if anything that might be more impressive that yeah. you were trying to make a landscape you're like this is so terrible it I drew a big more like a turtle. green circle oh. I drew a bunch of crossing lines for the pathways I was like it's just a turtle listen I will say at my school you couldn't just major in graphic design. It had to be studio arts. So I had four years of drawing plus figure drawing. Plus we had to take like 3D classes like painting or sculpture. So they really, they really rounded us out and then sent us off into the world. Is drawing the same as like any other skill where it just takes practice? Because I feel like a lot of people just think that drawing is you either have it or you don't. And in someone... In someone like Dylan's case or my own case, it's it's a skill that's so like visual and it's obviously and it's right. just there in front of you that I feel like when you're just getting started, you have this vision and you start drawing and then you look at it and you go, yeah, this is just terrible. I yeah. don't have it. I don't have it. Why am I going to keep trying? But you're saying, yes, you do have to just keep at it, right? Yes. I would say it's like a muscle. And you learn, you can learn how to draw and then practice, practice, practice. But I mean, that's the hardest part in your head. You'll see this amazing vision and then you try to put it on paper and you're like, I am terrible, but <laughs> just, I am way off. Like, yeah. This is not what I saw at all, but you don't have to stay terrible. It's I tell people all the time. You can learn. Anyone can learn. It's Courtney. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I could have told you that was Courtney. See, <laughs> I, I put a label on it. <laughs> Oh, hey, what were you saying? I said I was a published artist when I was six Aww. or so in How elementary so? school. What'd you, uh, we, what'd you make? It was an arts and crafts of a snowman. 
and then like a couple weeks later I guess it was like part of like a competition in our elementary school and I guess I don't I don't even know I don't know if it went to some it was somewhere in Rhode Island and then I got some plaque that said it got published or whatever so I, I my mom has it somewhere but congratulations yeah, probably published. congratulations Dave. I love it. thank you thank you we have two artists on the show yeah. Yeah, we do. You're real so, now. <laughs> I was so just Courtney, a hologram before. Courtney, with a couple of kids, are they sharing your passion for graphic design? Yeah, it's kind of funny because they think it's normal. So like my son will make like little comic books and they brand them. Like they made themselves a brand called Cap Kids and he designed a logo and on the back of all of his comic books, he puts it. And I'm like, this isn't something like, people outside of this business would think to do, but he's so used to seeing me add logos to everything and make logos that they're just like, Oh no, this is what we do. So they, they think it's normal. He's going to be like a, a president of marketing somewhere's dream. Be like this, this kid <laughs> yes. just gets branding. Yeah. He understands. He will be like, yes, make the logo bigger. Be like, oh no, <laughs> I failed. <laughs> let's, let's jump into that a little bit too. Oh, make boy. the logo bigger. It's a popular yeah. kind of meme throughout <laughs> visual art, social media. Yeah. And just, just what, what goes, what is make the logo bigger? Okay. I will. It is a meme because it's true. And every time an artist makes something and they have to put a logo on it, usually by an outside party, like a sponsor or even our own logo, you try to make it small. You want you know, it to be balanced and there's nothing wrong with white space and let's just tuck it in the corner and everyone will see it, but it isn't changing the mood of the piece. And without fail, when you email it off, you will get an email back. Can we please make the logo bigger? And sometimes they'll be like, just a little bigger. Can it be just a little bit bigger? And they'll be like, okay, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And it's, it's, um, it's gotta be something you have to like learn to to negotiate with where you're like let me start with a logo this big because if yeah. i made it this big to start yes. they'd want it this big so if I, I tell everyone like this, start small they're going to ask you to make it bigger no matter what size it is so if you start with what you think is a fair size they'll still be like no can we just a little just like a little bit it's you might go into a starbucks one day and see that on a mug and then you'll know what it means now yeah yeah <laughs> but All we do it listeners. we always make the logo bigger always yeah. Last question I have, now that the front office space is being built here at Polar Park, yep. you, Dylan, and I are cube buddies, all three of us in a row, right yep. when you walk into the office. Have we just been miserable to be around? And follow-up question before you even answer, what has been your trick to kind of hide yourself in your cube? Because I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay. First of all, no, you guys are the only reason I'm still in the main space. Otherwise, <laughs> I would still be hiding in the control room because it was, you know, it's a little, well, it is what it is. But sometimes, <laughs> it's, busy. sometimes it's busy. It's busy. And so we have two desks. We have a, like a low desk and then we have a desk that we can rise, raise up. It's like a standing desk. Yeah. So most people with their standing desk, when they want to stand, they raise the desk. When they want to sit, they put it back down. But I have found if you leave it high, and then sit at the other desk off to the side, which is low, people think you're not at your desk. And what? they'll come into the main door and like look in and be like, oh, she's not there <laughs> and leave. <laughs> so whenever I feel like I need to hide that, yeah, I just duck down. If I'm Courtney at her desk, there's a cubicle wall that's like above her head. And on the other oh. side, she has the desk all the way raised up full of like knickknacks decorations to further hide. And so you have to like go and like be peering into her cubicle to really see yeah. that that she's in fact there but it's, if you yeah, do that masterful. then i know you really need something so it, it works but out. just as easily you leave that up when you leave and yeah. someone looks over there you're like yeah Courtney's probably over there yeah but yeah. then they'll come and go and then the next time they'll be like no she was gone last time so she must she must be gone it's great where dylan and i are dylan's cube is right next to yours mine is two away and when you do yeah. it we'll even look over the cube walls and still not really know if you're there <laughs> yeah sometimes you hide in plain sight and it's the the way to do it <laughs> oh all right i think that's oh. all the time we have today courtney thank you so much this was a lot of fun always is just 
goofing around at work. What's better than that? Uh, but fans, that? fans who are listening, still tickets available for the last four home stands of the season. One starting off tomorrow, Tuesday, 645 start. And then a camp day, summer camp day, 1215 p.m. Get some day baseball on a Wednesday. So if you want tickets, go to woosocks.com, which Courtney has made beautiful. Call the ticket office at 508-500-8888. Number again is 508-500-8888. Or stop by Polar Park. Get your tickets in person at the ticket office. Go to the team store and wear some of Courtney's logos she's gonna love it she might ask to take a picture of you as you're just going about your day i will but just oblige <laughs> i just oblige yeah it's not gonna hurt the stranger has your photo who cares yeah just for the <laughs> memories though <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody thanks for listening we'll see you next time i almost told a story when my brother was in kindergarten they had to like draw uh they were like draw um like something about food and my brother drew a person with a little pile of poop next to him no (laughs) and wrote a caption on it and was like after you eat the food it had like arrows going down to the stomach too it's like after you eat the food you digest it and poop it out and the teacher (laughs) called my parents in for a conference and showed them the picture and they were like oh god I mean, he's not wrong. (laughs) And the teacher was like, never in my 20 years of teaching kindergarten have I had a student understand and use the term digest in the right way. I am so impressed. (laughs) They were, my parents were so caught off guard (laughs) that they got called into a conference, shown a photo their son drew of a human being pooping. Yep. And the teacher was like, this kid is a genius. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So that was a a reality changing moment for a lot of people (laughs) that day. They're like, the world is not what I thought this is. No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Save, save that one for after.